the reason for, being, for building Ming Ming 2, first of all Ming Ming 1 was getting a bit old. She'd done 20,000 miles and she's looking tired and I really had a choice. Either I had to do a complete refurbishment of Ming Ming 1 or I had to start again. And I like the idea of starting again because there were a lot of um, details about Ming Ming 1 which I felt I could improve. And so I thought I can put them into a new boat. Um, so it's a very much a development of Ming Ming Wong. The other thing was that, um, uh, as you know, I'm very keen on Arctic sailing. And when you're in the Arctic, particularly in, in the high Arctic, very high Arctic, sort of 70 80 north in July, there's a lot of very high pressure weather. Right. And you do get a high preponderance of very, very light winds. So um, I wanted a boat with a bigger rig, a very big rig, um, which would give me extra range um, for for the Arctic and a boat with just a little bit more water lining. I actually didn't need any more room inside. I've got everything I want in Ming Ming Wan, but if I could get three or four more feet on the water line, that would give me perhaps a half, three quarters of a knot extra average speed, which over 60 days gives you, you know, a thousand extra miles. Mm -hmm. So it gives me more time actually up there um, exploring than that's just simply getting there and back. Um, in terms of the development, the, the sail is bigger, uh, considerably bigger. There's a 280 foot um, sail, square foot sail, uh, which does very well in light airs. I've also I built the sail myself and I've introduced um, some new ideas into the sail. I mean, the idea of camber junk sail is very well established and they certainly perform better than the traditional flat cut junk sails. Mm -hmm. Um, what I've done uh, with this boat is to have a system whereby the camber um, increases as you come down. There are seven panels and each panel has more camber than the last So, because of course you're only using the bottom panels in, in very light air. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a much more powerful sail. Um, the other main difference is really all around the main hatch area. Ming Ming Wan only had one single hatch. Uh, which was very much a straight up hatch and it was a bit, um, I'm getting on a bit now, and getting in and out of that hatch in a big sea, um, yeah, it was a bit iffy sometimes. What I've done on this boat, I've actually got three hatches, a four hatch so that I can work at the mast, at the base of the mast without having to go on deck. That just opens and I've got all the, all the mast stuff there, uh, so that's very useful. I've still got the central hatch, same as on Ming Ming Wan, which is just for light and if I want to stick my head out the middle, but I've also got a, a, a much more highly developed after hatch behind the, uh, the new dog house which I've put on. And that hatch, because I, I can do absolutely everything uh, from that hatch, uh, uh, everything is reachable from there. Um, also, the, the central pod does give me full headroom and 360 de degree vision all round, so that in, in Arctic weather, I can stay inside the boat, warm and relaxed, but still see everything that's that's going on. On Ming Ming One, I, I still had to stick my head through the main hatch to do that. I'm de delighted with the way she sails in, in all weights of wind that we've encountered so far, but she is very, very good in, in light airs, which is what she was designed for. And my I don't have the instrumentation to actually check it, um, but my gut feeling at the moment is that I'm probably likely to average about a knot to maybe even a knot and a quarter uh, of average speed. I'm talking about daily runs here. Um, so instead of averaging, say, 65 miles a day, uh, which is what I used to on Ming Ming Wan, um, it might be something more like 90 miles a day. Uh, uh, that's, maybe that's a bit high. Right. But anyway, I think I might be able to get in another 1,500 miles of, of um, distance in a typical voyage. It gives me a lot more options. Brilliant. And, and a typical voyage is one of how many days for you? Normally between 60 and 70. 60 and the, last, the last two voyages, one was 69 days, that was to West Greenland. Right. And then the, the very last voyage on Ming Ming Wan to Spitsbergen and 80 North was 67 days. Right. So around about 70 days. Okay. Any particular reason why they are 60 to 70 days? Just that that's as much time as you can carry with water and... Um, I take 100 stuff. days of food, so right, I could okay. stay, keep the sea for 100 days. It's, um, 
I think it's more to do with the weather conditions. Yeah. Uh, and the uh, not simply uh, meteorological, but also the daylight um, oh, thing right. as well. Yeah. Um, it's it's about the length that seems to suit me as well. Okay. By the time I'm getting towards 70 days, I'm probably ready to, uh, have a uh, to come ashore. <laughs> I might even be ready to have a bath. <laughs>